is my youngest girl. This is Maple. Come on back here. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Good girl. That's perfect. Um, so, Maple has a really rough backstory here. She's about two years old. And she was found on the streets in a small town, North Carolina, uh, digging out of dumpsters and eating cat food off my friend's back porch. And she called around every single no-kill shelter within two hours drive were completely full. Not only that, but uh, even the municipal shelters were full. And so the only thing they could do was keep her for the 48 hour hold and then euthanize her. That's all there was, and there wasn't anyone looking for her. My friend couldn't keep her because she was a very hyperactive little puppy. And my friend had a dog who didn't like a hyperactive puppy. So she called me and we worked out the details and I came and got her. And she's my little angel. But her story gets even worse. Now, when she came to me, she had a few scars on her already. I'm not sure if you can see this line here. I can't really see, especially with somebody folding on top of it. But, um, you know, it looks like somebody might have hit her or um, possibly that she had a leash burn or got hit by a car. Who knows? But she had a rough time, you know. But uh, then... I had had her just about a year when somebody stole her from me. She was gone for an entire week. Well, about five days. The whole time, I canvassed the entire city. Now, mind you, she's microchipped and everything, but they took her right out of her collar. So there was no other identification on her. And her being a pit mix, I don't know if you could see this, but she's definitely got a little pit in her. Um, definitely not all pit, because she's only 30, 36 pounds, but, um, anyways, I was scared for the worst. I was scared they were going to fight her or use her as a bait dog, so I printed out flyers. I had, like, a $600 reward offered. I made a website. I mean, I went nuts. Every shelter, every veterinary clinic, I was there every day looking for her. I was talking to homeless folks. I was talking to drug dealers. I was letting them know there's a reward for any information on this dog. And lo and behold, before long, somebody called me and they had found her supposedly on the streets. And I met him and his truck. He refused a reward. But um, she was covered in scars, again, including circular burn marks on her feet and some sort of burn mark that I don't want to tell you what I think it was, but uh, somebody identified it as probably being the product of human abuse. I took her to a vet the very next day as soon as we could get her in, and uh, luckily she had no internal injuries, and all her burns were healing up well on her own. But uh, that was pretty awful, you know, to be re-traumatized again by human beings after everything she's been through. It's a miracle. She's just a gentle little angel, though. She's really come through it. She, uh, she barks and growls at strange noises sometimes. She gets a little spooked. You get spooked? You get spooked? Yeah, you get spooked real easy. Now the other th issue that she has is she's extremely active. She is so active she wears my other two dogs out daily. I can take her to the dog park and run her for hours with the other dogs and she'll come back and still want to run when she gets home. And we've done a lot of conditioning to keep her calm, you know, rewarding her for calm behavior and laying quiet because a lot of it's just nervous uh, hyperactivity. And uh, she has a little trouble with commands because of that. She tries really hard to obey, but she gets confused really easy sometimes when we're doing tricks and she'll just start doing all of them because she just gets so hyper. She figures, well, let me just, let me just try all of them. Maybe that'll work. That's right, huh? You want to shake? Cool. That's a good shake. Oh, done with that game, I guess. So that was Maple. She's a good dog. Good boy, Rusty. Good boy. You like the snow, buddy? Come on. This is my big old boy, Rusty. That's a big old boy there. You got a bone, buddy? That's a cool bone. Cool, you just work on that bone. You're doing great, buddy. Rusty is also a special needs rescue. Yeah, Rusty. That's your name, huh, buddy? Um, <clears throat> my friend had found him, and she, uh, found him as a stray. She was going to keep him. He has severe separation anxiety. It was so bad, he tried to chew through her walls, her doors. He destroyed several metal crates. He even destroyed a metal tether by jumping up and chewing it off of its post. 
he was, you know, hurting himself, bleeding from the jaws and the feet every day when she came home from work. She just couldn't keep him. She rehomed him to a family who was supposed to take care of him and love him. About six months later, eight months later, they called her and they said, you need to come get this dog or we're going to put him up for free on Craigslist. His family that decided to just ditch him. When I got over there, they were keeping him in a fenced-in yard with no shelter except for an open tool shed to crawl up against. And I don't mean inside, I mean like against the foundation. That was all he had there in the mud. They had taken a nice dog bed of his and put it outside. It was soaked with rain. I couldn't salvage it. All the toys, all the leashes and collars my friend had sent, all those were gone. He was just in this huge backyard by himself, ignored. And, uh... Needless to say, once I got him back home, he needed to relearn everything. He needed to relearn how to walk on a leash. He needed to relearn how to be indoors. Now, he's a very smart boy. You smart, buddy? He's like, Mom, I'm eating. Leave me alone. Anyway, um, his separation anxiety was so bad, at first he wouldn't let me shower by myself. Uh, he would be shaking against the door in terror if I went into the bathroom alone for that long, so I'd have to let him in and he'd curl up next to the bathtub while I was showering. This was when I was in a sticks and bricks house, of course. And um, I took him on because I'm self-employed, so I can work my schedule around and make sure he's not alone that long, but we've worked really hard on the separation anxiety. Um, I've got a great workbook on it, I'll try to link it in the comments, and uh, using positivity training to address the issue has been incredibly successful. I mean, um, basically, you start just by going outside for 30 seconds, in and out, and you give him a reward if he doesn't get up to stare out the door and look for you. And then you do it again for one minute, two minutes, building up that time, till eventually I could leave him for 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Now I can leave him for easily four or five hours alone uh, with the other dogs to watch him, and he's fine. Might get a little nervous if I'm if there's loud noises, but he's he's accepted that I'm always coming back. I'm not really leaving, so he's uh he's very brave. And obviously, I give him usually a couple stuffed kongs, a couple of bones like this to work on, so he's not thinking about me being gone too much either. Isn't that right, buddy? You learned, didn't you? He's come really far. And that was his only real behavioral issue, you know. Um, other than that, he's a wonderful, wonderful, well-adjusted dog. Very calm very relaxed and he's yet he's active enough to keep up with the other dogs and he's got white on his muzzle but he's actually only six years old so he's a he's a young man still he just looks like a big old man you're a tough boy aren't you you wanna get that bone you wanna get it you wanna get it can I have some of this can I have some mmm okay you can have it back there you go good boy you smart, huh? This is my precious Loopy. She was the first dog that I rescued or kept, after rescuing at least. She was and is extremely, extremely special needs. She was living feral when I found her. And I hadn't meant to keep her. I was going to rehab her a bit and rehome her, but she was just so complicated that I couldn't, I couldn't find anyone else I trusted with her. So I ended up keeping her. And I don't regret it one bit. I don't regret it. Not one bit. Not one bit. Uh, when I found her, she was just skin and bones. The vet said from her condition she had been out in the woods by herself for a minimum of two months surviving as a small puppy. She was only five or six months old when I found her. And she's a little bit strange. <laughs> she's just a little bit strange. She's very smart. She's a Border Collie mix of some kind. Probably Border Collie and Lab or Golden Retriever. Something else that likes to run and be a pain in the butt. And she knows so many commands. You do, don't you? You want to show off a little bit? Loopy, up, up, sit. Yes, good sit. Good job. Very smart. Very smart. Lay down. Yes. Now crawl. Good crawl. Very good. But, um, along with that, that border collie genius comes a big border collie pain in the buttness. She can roll down car windows by herself. She can open zippers, for example, tent zippers, and leave in the middle of the night from the tent. She can even open the door to my RV, if I don't have it locked, and let herself out. 
and she is a runner. She doesn't run to get away from me per se. She just wants to get far enough away that I don't bring her back inside. Uh, being as she was, um, you know, feral for so long, she just wants to stay out there. It's her favorite thing in the world to be outside. She doesn't understand why we don't all want to sleep out there with her. Now, over the years, she's gotten a little bit better. She understands the idea that we come home and we stay inside during the nighttime, especially, or when the weather's gross like it is today. Now, look at this gross weather. <laughs> See, days like that, I don't let her stay outside all day. That's pretty, pretty hard on you, huh? You got a pretty hard life. Um, anyways, though, um, she also has, uh, survived bloat. When she was about two years old, she had bloat, and, uh, this was while she was in a kennel, and luckily they recognized it immediately, uh, doggy daycare, they rushed her to the vet, and I was in Oregon, about, you know, 3,000 miles from her at the time, and amazingly, she survived the surgery. My husband came out of work and went and picked her up and waited for her and everything, uh, so that was good, but, uh, I mean, it was obviously traumatic for her, and after that surgery is really when her and I completely bonded. She started, I guess, realizing her mortality and wanting to be around me, wanting to be protected by a human, and that was really sweet. She started wanting to lay with me, follow me around. I hate that it had to happen like that, but I think she understood that I was protecting her and taking care of her. Now, the other thing is, you may notice there's no tail here. Now... This is not because I had it docked for aesthetic reasons. I would never do that to an animal. She had adenocarcinoma cancer in the, of the sweat gland in the tail, and the tail had to be removed. First, we had a surgery to remove the lump and have it labbed, and then we found out it was a very aggressive, very rapidly spreading cancer, and I made them do a bunch of tests to make sure it had not spread. I said, you are not going to take her tail unless you're certain that will be curative, and they were able to determine the cancer had not spread anywhere else, and she is now a year and a half free of cancer, which is pretty much a definition of cured for a puppy. So that was awful for her, obviously, having those major procedures, losing her tail. It was awful. It was dreadful. And then finally, this year, she's always had some neuroses. She's afraid of loud noises. She's afraid of rainstorms. And uh, we've managed it really good with positivity training, um, giving her high-value food treats whenever there's uh, thunder, for example. And I managed to keep her relatively stable like that. And she is completely crate trained. Always goes in her crate willingly. She only associates it with good experiences for the most part, you know. Um, she still loves to go in there, but while I was gone this winter, um, she was in her crate and something must have frightened her and she tried to break out. And she tried to break out of the bars and she snapped off all of her front teeth. I didn't even know anything was wrong. I came back, I'd been only gone about four hours, I came back and um, I put her outside and I went to bring her a water bowl outside. And she drank some water and there was blood in the bowl and I thought, what the heck? And I opened her mouth and I said, we're going to the vet right now. Um, and I got her into the emergency vet right away. She had broken off. Um, she, she's laying on her broken teeth. But she's, she broke off three, three, four, five teeth here. Three of them clear into the root and the nub. One of them was just the pulp was hanging out and bleeding. It was terrible. It was a nightmare. Um, needless to say, she is a survivor. And um, she, since that incident has a, a standing prescription for a wonderful drug called acepromazine. Remind you, she is also, she's the same age as Rusty, she's only six years old. If I'm lucky, I'll have at least another six years with her. And I have every intention of keeping her healthy and strong and stable as much as I can so I can have that much time with her. Rusty, come on in here. Up, up. Oh. Oh, did you get stepped on? Yeah, you tell her what for. Rusty, come on back. Come on, bud. Come on. Up. Oh, Rusty. No, not you. I don't want you. Nobody wants you, Maple. Calm down. Good boy. Rusty, sit. Good boy. Good sit. Smart boy. So, I have been involved in animal rescue since I was a small child. I started volunteering at a county shelter when I was just uh, 13 years old, and Try to stay involved wherever I travel if I can, volunteer or help out or at least... The uh, three dogs that I have are all dogs that uh, 
couldn't be placed anywhere else. They were either troubled or just all the rescues were, were um, full up. Basically situations where if I didn't save these dogs, something bad was going to happen to them or they were going to be put down.